welcome to our design class thank you for your interest in our online training course on reinforced concrete design my name is engineer Andy Freco Kong and I will be your instructor so let's get started I'm so excited to have you here today in our structural design class we want to model two-story building for a classroom block in total structure. So when you want to carry out the new model, when you launch the software, you go to where you have new project. This is where you start a new project. So the, the first thing you need to do is to, you know, write the name of the project so in our case it's going to be design of to story building for Classroom for classroom block. Okay, you can talk with that. Then the next thing you do is to click on your the the relevant code. That is the code that you want to use for the design. So you click on OK, and the software will take you to. It's environment okay so this is the, the protest structure environment so you go to external reference drawing to import the drawing from where you have saved it so this is where I serve the, the Excel file so you click on it you click open check these two boxes for it to be active then you click on import then here is where you set your your layers so for the grid line I use grid line I use center line then for the column I will allow it at column then for the wall I will uncheck this layer wall then allow all work to remain so after you have done that the next thing is to click on import you close then you click ok ok so this is the external reference drawing that we have we have already prepared the general arrangement of this so let's look at it in the architectural drawing in the, in the AutoCAD. So this is the elevation, the front elevation of the school. This is the right elevation and this is the section of the design. And here we have the architecture that is the ground floor plan and we have the first floor plan and here is the second floor plan. So here is a general arrangement for the first floor and this is for the second floor and this is the, the roof layout arrangement. Now when you are designing a two-story building, what you do is you use the ground floor to prepare general arrangement for the first floor and you use the first floor to prepare general arrangement for the second floor while you use the second floor to prepare the roof general layout so that is how it is okay so we are going to design this two-story building in protest structure so we We 
want to extend this break line. Okay, what we want to do right now is to re is to relabel this to relabel this grid line in protar structure because the the label we have in AutoCAD is not what protar structure is giving us. So protar structure software has a different way of labeling the grid line so we want to edit this grid line level in order to correspond with what we have in the autocad environment so we want to edit it okay so let's look at how it is in the autocad environment Okay, we have this is our grid line A. This is A prime. This is A prime prime. And this is B. So let's follow suit. So you click, you right click, go to property, and you change the level here. So we have A. You click on update and you close. So the next one is A prime. So you right click again. A prime. Update. Okay. The next one is a prime prime come to where you have this right click a prime prime so we are finished editing the the quick line Let's check the column. Okay, grid line three. This is grid line three. Okay, we need a column here. This grid line four. Grid line four. This grid line four. We need a column here. And then column here. Column here. Let's check. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. We go back and check because we have we have to cross check our column position to see if it, all of them correspond with what we have in the GA. column this is grid line five grid line five this is five prime so column here so column here this five so we have a column at this point we have a column here
grid line 5, grid line 6. Grid line 6 prime. Grid line 6 prime. Let me a column here. Then column here. Grid line 6. We have a column here, have a column here, have a column here. Grid line 6. We have a column here. We have a column here. Okay, we have been able to fix all our columns. I fix our column. The next thing we we'll do right now is to insert our beam. To insert the beam, we go to modeling. We click on beam. Dialog beam dialog box will pop out. So you. We are going to use 2 to 5 by 600 so I have effected I have defined the, the beam section so you allow this dialog box to be to be active so that you can insert your beam properly We 
you have not yet subscribed to our channel please enable to click on the subscribe button so that when we upload a new training video you you will be notified and feel free to share and comment on our on our video please just like comment on our video to help us and if you have any comment please feel free to drop it in the comment box In this channel we are dedicated to creating civil engineering training tutorial
Okay, we have finished the setting our beam. So the next thing we will do now is to insert our wall load. So let's go back to the architectural drawing. Okay, so from the architectural drawing here, we have a similar arrangement. We have a similar arrangement, so meaning that um, what is in the ground floor is also what is in on the is what is also in the first floor, and exactly what is in the second floor. So meaning that wall load will be in all the major walls except the one that we introduce new. So there will be wall beams, wall load, sorry, there will be wall load on this, there will be wall load on this, so let's go back. So we will have wall load here, wall load here, it's a few beams that we have introduced. Okay, so to reset wall load, you click on the beam, go to edit wall load wall load so here we will have 3.47 then the height here is 3 meter then we have 225 to click on ok so you copy copy wall load come to where you have your beam click on one of the beams then you hold your shift key you click on the last beam then you right click and you click on this wall So the wall load has finished pasting. But when you look at the architectural drawing, we introduce a beam here. We introduce a beam here. We introduce a beam here. We also introduce a beam at this point. So this beam does not does not have wall load. So this beam that we have introduced does not have wall load. So we are going to remove them. We have, these are, this is a new beam that we have introduced because they do not have one. This one, this one. So we are going to remove the wall load from it. So this beam do not have wall load. So we click on it. We click delete wall load. So you can actually click in all the beams that you want to remove wall load by using the control key use the control key
so you right click delete one okay so we have been able to remove all load on those beams that do not have the wall load so the next thing we will do is to set a slab click on slab we go back to general arrangement so we are using 150 slab so we type in 150 here the concrete cover is 20 so you go back to load so that load apart from the set weight of the the slab we have other dead loops so let's go to our design template what are the other dead loads that we have we have 50 manuscripts then we have finishes to service 0.0.0.6 0 0 then we have 2.9 which is 2.87 as the wall load so for us to have the remaining wall load the remaining dead load so what we do is to subtract 3.6 from 8.1 so minus 3.6 so we have 4.5 so the remaining dead load is 4.5 then we go to impose load this is a classroom block this is a school block so the impose load which is the light load is not like that of residential so how do we have how do we get this impose load so we go to the hero code that we are using for the art design so we click on hero code one hero code one in table six point one categories of use so these are the different categories of use these are specific use and these are example of it so we are going to look at where school falls into where school falls into so area where people may congregate with the exception of area defined under category a b and d okay area with table example area in school cafe restaurant dining hall reading room reception area with fixed seats area in churches theater or cinema conference room lecture hall assembly hall waiting room railway waiting room okay then let's look at c3 area with obstacle for obstacle for moving people and so on and so forth so okay so we can pick c1 we can pick c1 category c then example c1 so let's get the magnitude of that c1 the magnitude of c1 is 2.0 to 3.0 so we can for school we can pick between 2.0 to 3.0 so let's go for the maximum which is 3.0 so we come we go back to further structure environment we put 3.0 as an impose look so we are okay this one two. so now place our slab
okay if you want to change the color of your your beam for instance you want to change the color of this beam so what you simply do the clip on the beam you go to display come to layer click on color okay you come to where you have beam beam hash so you can change the color of this beam to whatever color that you want so i want to change it to let me change my beam color to blue so let me change it to this color click on ok so I'll change the color of my beam to that then I can as well change the color of my slab if I want to change the color of my slab I can change it just you click on the slab you go back to display you click on grid So we can change the slab to let's change the slab to a different color. Mm. Let's change the slab to this color. Okay. Okay. So the next thing we will do now is for us to insert a new story because since we are designing for two stories so we have just finished modeling for one story so the next one the next thing we will do is for us to insert story so to insert story to insert a new story you click you click on story right click on it click on story go to insert story insert story story 2 so you go back to story 1 then click on story right click generate ok so we are going to generate a second floor so our source story is story 1 then target story is story 2 so you click here since we have the same arrangement, so we will just allow everything to, to remain. So we have successfully generated the second story. So let's generate the last one, which is the roof level for the roof layout. So we go back, click on story, right click, go to the reset story. You write in Z3. You click on story 2, then go back to story right click, then click on generate here. Since it is a roof layout, so the slab will not be there. So you uncheck the slab, uncheck the slab, then you click on your target story, then you click on OK. Okay, so the the last story has been generated. So what we need to do right now is for us to remove the the wall load. Okay, let's look at it in 3D. Let's look at it in 3D so that we, you can appreciate what we are doing. Okay, so this is our last story. So we don't have need of this wall this is the first story this is the first floor this is the second floor and this is the roof level so we are going to remove this wall so we we'll go back to plan okay so just click on one of the view right click okay click on one of these view Press your shift key. Press your shift key. Then 
click on the last the then right click now we are going to use, we are going to do two things here number one we are going to delete delete all one loop delete all one loop so all the one loop has been deleted so you where this thing is still active you right click again we are going to change the section of the beam remember this is roof level so we are changing the section of the beam so the section of the beam will now become 225 by 300 5 by 300 So here we are going to remove some of this beam because this is the roof level. This is the roof beam level. So it will be it will not be economical for us to allow all the, the beam to run at this level. So we are going to remove some of this beam. So we are going to remove this. This one will also be this will go. This will go. This will go. And this will also be good. Let's insert the parapet, the concrete station. Let's insert the concrete station. The concrete station. Let's check. So to, ins to insert the concrete special, you click on modeling, go to slab. Here you change this to 100. Cover 20. Then load. The load here is going to be just nominal 1.5. Impose load 1.5. 1.5 when we go back to general the slab type is going to be cantilever so you click here then you come to where you have cantilever you now click on this and you click on parapet parapet here you can use 2.25 okay
Okay. So we have done that. Let's look at it. Let's look at it in Okay. Okay, I think we will stop this segment here. We don't want the video to be too long. So we we'll continue in part in part two. Thank you for watching. See you in part two. Bye.